Hi everybody, Micah here. I'm starting a new series to build a TV watch list app using Symfony. Um, this is going to be a real simple Symfony application to keep track of the user's TV watch list. My main intent of this is to demonstrate how modern PHP entities interact and how Twig and Symfony entity types can be used to display information with very little actual code being written by the developer. That's the real interest in this application is, is looking at these different en entities, how they interact, how you can get data, um, really with a very simple request, how you can get data out. Um, this is not going to be a deep dive into Symfony. I'm not a huge Symfony expert, so I'm not here to teach everything needed to know about Symfony. This is not a complete project. There are levels of security and things we're going to do um, <clears throat> that, uh, or, or things that we should do that I'm just going to completely skip in this project. Uh, this is really going to be like the start of a project that would need a lot of refinement to actually be production ready. Um, and that's not the point of this project or this series, so I'm not going to go that far. So the features we are going to have, um, obviously we have a user account and the user can log in and then we'll build a list of streaming providers, uh, Netflix, uh, Hulu, Amazon Prime, you know, whatever the, whatever people are using for streaming so you can like list where you're watching these shows. Um, and then user, the user will be able to add shows and rate them on a scale of one to five. Um, for this project, I'm going to use Docker on Mac OS. Uh, this could easily be built, just as easily be built on Windows. Um, it, really, the whole goal is to build something that can run on any LAMP stack. So um, Champ or MAMP would be other places or ways that this could be built. Uh, for the startup of this, uh, there are ways to do the whole startup in Docker, but it's tricky and I don't want to bog down the demo with that. So this demo assumes you've got PHP 8.1, you know, the minimum requirements for um, Docker 6 installed on your computer and you've got a composer installed and are ready to get started. I'm not going to cover all of that. Um, I have other videos that I've done for our uh, CIS students at Henry Ford College on my channel that show how to get some of these things installed and set up and running. So I'm not going to cover that. So we're just going to jump right in here. I'm going to go kind of fast through the beginning of this because there are, again, a million tutorials out there on how to get started with Symfony and how to set up Symfony. And that's not what I want to get at in this series. So I'm just going to go right to the installing and setting up Symfony framework page, skip past all the technical requirements. We're not going to use the, the Symfony binary, so we don't really need to mess with that. I'm going to drop right down here to Composer, and I'm just going to start making the project. I'm going to do the steps here to make the full traditional web project. So I get in my prompt and my directory where I put my Docker projects, and I'm going to make a project called Watchlist. And this will run. It'll download everything we need to make Symfony. I'm going to go into my directory. As you can see, it's suggesting that I make a Git repository. I'll do that in just a second, um, but not yet. So CD to watch list. Uh, I want to go ahead and do the second install step. Um, I'm going to grab this web app bundle. Um, that's going to give me everything I need for a full web application and, and pull that in as well. <clears throat> And so I've basically typed two commands. Oh, I've got to answer yes here. I've basically typed two commands, and I have a Symfony project installed in a directory ready to start. Um, this is, you know, the basic initial Symfony framework. So git init and git branch. Make a new master branch, the 1.0.x version, um, and then git add all the files and commit and now we've got a git repository of our project so we can go ahead and make changes and uh, keep a history of our changes as we go through this project so if you look at the files in this directory now you'll see that there are two files here docker compose 
uh, override and Docker Compose YAML uh, that are set up so that you could run this with Docker and basically all it's going to use Docker for is um, to create a PostgreSQL database server. I, I want to do this in in basically a LAMP or a LAMP stack, so I want Nginx, uh, PHP, and MariaDB as, as my platform. So I'm going to go ahead and copy in some files that, that I that I have already developed for, for other projects and change my Docker setup really quickly here. So, um, and I'm not going to go into huge detail on those. I'll make these files available online when I post this video and you can get more details and, and look at those that, then. This Docker Compose file uh, is going to use MariaDB 10.7. It's going to use my custom uh, Docker image that I've created for PHP. I've pushed this publicly up to um, I've pushed this publicly up to Docker Hub, and I also have made the source information public of of what is actually in this repository. You can find that in my Bitbucket account, um, actually in the Henry Ford College Bitbucket account, and you can look and see all of the files. Uh, that are involved in making this Docker image. So I have a, a custom image that uh, is going to mount the current directory as the web server data. It's going to connect to the MariaDB server. Um, it, this is important here. With the default port on this is going to be 8080 for the web server, unless you change your Nginx port. So I'll, I'll show you how to do that. Um, and then it also includes PHP my admin, which lives on or listens on port 8081. So now that I have this up and running, or I have these these files changed. Um, we're going to double check everything looks good. But just to make sure I'm going to actually run it first, um, I have found that that works much better. So I'm going to set my Nginx port to 80 in my environment. Um, Docker compose up with the minus D and that will run it in the background. So this is starting all of our containers. You can now see them running with Docker PS. And if we were to go look now, I should have a website running on localhost port 80. My symphony site that I just, that I just installed. And there we are, we get a 404 error because we haven't created a home page for this page for this site yet, but it's there. And then if we go to localhost 8081 and log in as root root, which is something you can override, but I didn't because I'm running locally. And here's our app database, nice, fresh, empty database ready for us to go um, in a Docker volume so we can get back to that data later when we're ready to do so. So now let's go ahead and first of all, we'll commit our changes. Um, commit early, commit often. Um, change config for just say LAMP stack, even though it's not really LAMP because we don't have Linux involved. Um, but we'll just call it that to give it a commit message and be able to move on. So now, part of what got installed here is the um, is the Symphony console. So if we take bin slash console. We should get um, we should get that console output and part of what's installed here with the packages that we chose when we set up Symphony is we have the Maker bundle and we can make a controller. We need a controller and a template in order to make a page in Symphony. And so bin console make make controller. And then this is this controller is probably going to be the controller for all of our pages, so we'll just call it pages controller. Um, if we don't put this on the command line, that it will prompt us for it. But otherwise, it just boom, it made it. And you know, it made a pages controller and it made some templates in this directory here. And so let's go look at the code and see what we got. So first we'll take a look in source controller and it made a controller called pages controller. It created a route, which is how we find our pages. 
uh, for slash pages and then and it gave it a name it and then it calls this uh, template to to render the page so let's take a quick look at this page uh, so we'll go to localhost slash pages and here we are, a kind of not helpful page. Uh, let's go back and modify that just a bit. And we're gonna make this the front page of our application. So we'll just change the route to slash. We'll change the route name to front page. And let's go ahead and change the function name to front page. The route name, the function names just have to be unique within a controller. They can be pretty much any legal function name as long as they're unique um, within this controller. And then the route names can really be kind of anything. They just should make sense to you. And they should, um, they have to be unique throughout the entire application. You can't use the same route name twice. Anywhere, if multiple controllers, you would need a different route name. So now if we come back and go to the home page of our application, we should see we'll get that same page. So what is this page? What's going on here? So um, we do send the controller name, pages controller. Um, that's that's cool. And then we were calling this pages index.html twig file. So that's in the templates folder. And there it is. This is the template that, um, that this made well this is great and it kind of shows me a little bit about templates but i'm not going to want to keep this but let's take a quick look here this extends base html template so let's look at the base html template for a minute this is the base template that comes with uh composer or i'm sorry it comes with symphony when you um when we first did the install now, it would be possible to just go ahead and modify this base template um, if, if you wanted to make changes, and, and most likely you will want to make some changes to the HTML structure. But I ran into a problem once when upgrading that the base template got upgraded and it kind of overwrote my changes or wanted to overwrite my changes. So I, I think it's better to go ahead and just make your own base template for your application and just leave this default base template completely alone. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to actually remove uh, that whole pages directory that it made. And then from my other files, I'm going to copy my app template into the templates directory. So let's take a look at that file now not going to go into too much detail right now about what's in here. We'll have some things that we'll need to change later. I just got a comment at the top explaining what it is. I'm using a built-in function to get the current route for current path, because then I'm going to actually put a class of page dash current path on, uh, on the body. And that's just going to help me later with CSS. I've got some CSS files here. I actually decided I don't want the print CSS file, so we'll get rid of that. I've got a couple of CSS files here, and we'll go grab those in a minute. Um, otherwise, they're missing. And you'll see that what we need here, I, I should have talked about this a little bit in the original template that I've already deleted. But we're, the data that we want in Twig is title which is used here and down here. Let me change this so I can change this so that it appears a little nicer. And then also we want content. Um, that's what we want to pass. And so, and then I've got a header and a navigation and some other things here. So just to get the page out, we're gonna now say that we're gonna use the app template. I need a title. And that's going to be my watch list. And then we need some content. So we could do the good old hello world. So we're passing title and content to this template. And we should get, um, we'll worry about these path things later. If you see, I've actually, I've actually got these commented out. They won't work in Twig right now because we don't have these routes defined yet. We do have the route front page defined. Um, so this is going to be a link back to the front page, but these other links are broken. We're not ready for them. So I need title and content, and I should get 
pretty much the same when I refresh my page. Uh, there's the title. Oh, and I do have the login link, but it doesn't go anywhere. Um, so I've got the tie. I've got the site name up here, which links back to the front page. I've got my my title that I passed. My hello world. Let's go grab first. We'll grab my CSS. And what we need to do is in the public directory, make a CSS directory. So that's this directory right here, public. Um, it comes with an index.php, you never touch that. I'm gonna copy my application CSS file down here. And then the other one I had listed was normalize.css. And we're gonna go get that one from the internet. So normalize.css, it's here. It's this file on GitHub. Nicholas normalize.css and if we open that up and view the raw source then we can download this file and copy it into our project directory and now if we refresh our page we've got a little bit of style and and look here and again this login link doesn't do anything yet we're going to do that in the next video we're going to create a user and set us up to be able to log in and log out but there you have it. In just a few minutes, I have thrown together a very, very quick start to a Symfony application. Again, we want to come back here and and so we've added two CSS files, our pages controller, and our new app template. And we'll do things later that will extend that app template and give us specialized templates for what we want. But we've got a starting point. Um, if you look at that, you know, we've got the, the HTML we have now, it has that class of page front page on it because we did that. I talked about that earlier. Uh, we've got a little bit of page structure and basically what we'll have is as we start building out other pages, we can fill in anything that's in this block body and replace it with our own content and have this be different templates for different pages, whatever we want to do. So that's what we've got coming up later on in, in this demo, this tutorial, whichever you want to call it. But our next step, we'll come back and add the user information.